The GT86 is never a car that I should have liked. It's Japanese and it's pretty slow. It's got a two litre naturally aspirated Subaru engine, which according to Evo magazine, which have sponsored this video, does not to 60 in 6.9 seconds. <laughs> it's pretty slow. But after consistently watching TJ Hunt videos, I started to realize how much potential these GE86s or BRZ or if you're American BRZ, actually have. Yes, there's quicker cars you can get for the price of a GE86, but I got this one ridiculously cheap. I sort of accidentally won it on Copa. I seen it, I thought, you know what? One of them will be pretty cool. I put a low ball offer in and I won it. So say hello to my crash damaged, mega cheap GT86. <laughs> Okay, so as mentioned, inside one of these is a severely underpowered, two litre, naturally aspirated Subaru engine. Now I say it's underpowered, it actually has 197 bhp, but when you compare that to an Audi TT with a two litre turbo engine in, they only have 205 bhp, so maybe it's not that bad after all. But let's talk about how much I bought this for and exactly what is damaged, because, well, we've stumbled across a few things that are a little unexpected, as usual, <laughs> on this channel. Well, the good news with the 86, it actually starts. And it sort of drives to an extent. Now, like the M4, the Maserati, the Mustang, and the 140i, which is half an M2, this thing is rear-wheel drive, so it should be a lot of fun on the track. That's, of course, if I can get this fixed. Now, looking at the pictures and everything on Copa, it didn't actually look that bad. And still, when it got delivered here, I still didn't think it looked that bad. But just wait further in the video and I'll tell you why <laughs> it's pretty bad. But with all that being said, I'm actually really looking forward to cracking on with this build because it actually will be one of the cheapest builds we've done since the Audi TT. In fact, Evo Magazine actually rated the GT86 four out of five star. But don't worry, after we're finished with it, I'm sure it'll be a five out of five star. <laughs> Yes? It's really weird that you'd mention Evo Magazine because they've actually sponsored today's video. That's right, they have. Evo is the world's leading sports, performance and premium car magazine. Established in the UK in 1998, Evo has grown to be a truly international brand. It places its audience behind the wheel of the world's greatest driver's cars, just like my little Toyota. I've been getting Evo Magazine delivered monthly and it's nice to read it in my down times between filming, editing and working on the cars. Now weirdly, my favourite part about the magazine is at the back there's all the performance figures of the latest cars and their actual tested, real life condition 0-60 times. So you can sign up to get three issues for just £5 by clicking the link in the description box below. Or if you choose to sign up to get the six issues for £24, you'll get the free photo book. Thanks Evo Magazine for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive into the 86, let's work out what's damaged, see if we can work out the history of the car, and see whether it was a good price or not. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like that. Don't make me pretend I don't see a shark coming. Uh, you'll be running when I raise the black flag. Okay, so the obvious damage you can see from the photos almost straight away was the bonnet. The bonnet definitely needs replacing. I thought this wing had had a knock, but it looks like it's, well, it's in one piece and it looks fine. The good news is headlights. We've not got to mess around with headlights, at least I don't think so. None of the lenses are smashed and they look good. The headlight is not coming on on this side, but potentially it could be a bulb. And that side looks all good. Now, Copart are a bit cheeky to say the least. I've obviously just removed that front bumper or what was left of it. And I think they've deliberately just put that on hand tight to cover up the crash bar here, which has actually been pushed back into the radiator. Now, this crash bar is, well, it looks like a goner. It's completely written off. Now, it doesn't look that bad that it's bent the chassis or anything like that, but it has pushed it back enough to hit the radiator, hit the aircon condenser as well. And from the looks of it, it's dropped all the coolant out on the floor. So, well, I think they've deliberately hidden that. Well, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong or not, but I think they've definitely done that on purpose. On this side, we've got some sort of bumper clip headlights around. On this side, 
It's, um, well, broken, so we're gonna have to find one of them. And this wheel definitely doesn't look like it's in the right place. It looks like it's moved forward, but we'll get onto this later. As for the rest of the car, it doesn't actually look that bad, although it is really dirty. I mean, there's little things like this. The wing isn't really held on, but we will be getting rid of that at some point. The interior, again, is really dirty and filthy, and we've got a lot of, well, crap everywhere. But, again, nothing looks damaged as such. And these, well, they look like they've been painted with nail varnish. <laughs> now, what I find fun about buying these crash damaged cars is trying to figure out the whole history. How did it get to this point, and who owned it before? And we've got a bit of a telltale story in the car. We have got a hell of a lot of receipts for fuel, which is V-Power fuel as well, from a postcode in HU, which is up north somewhere, I think Hull maybe? And it looks like the chap who owned the car before was into tweaking and modifying stuff because, well, this stuff is all meant to be black and he's painted it red to obviously match the steering wheel. Well, if only he's driving was as good as his painting. <laughs> and it looks as if his name is Mr. Jop or Mr. Giop. But thanks Mr. Jop for the car. I think we're gonna enjoy this one. Now these Toyotas aren't expensive at all. You're looking around eight to 12,000 pound for a half decent one. But I think that price reflects in the build quality. But you'd be completely mad to buy an 86 for the build quality. You buy it because they're supposed to be really fun to drive. And I think they're cool to look at. Sometimes driving a slow car fast is more fun than driving a fast car slow. So how much did I buy this thing for? I won my GT86, which is a 2012 with 72,000 miles on, for four and a half thousand pounds. Which I think's an absolute bargain. Well, I thought was an absolute bargain. Now buying a cheap car like the Toyota, I just assumed that parts will be easy to find and they'll be cheap, but you should never assume. You see this thing here, this is a bent wishbone and this is what I suspect is moving the wheel forward. I noticed this almost straight away when the car got dropped off, so I was almost immediately looking for wishbones for a GT86. And this is where I realised I could be in a spot of trouble. Now I rang everywhere, your Euro car parts, I rang the local parts dealer, I've even rang the place where I used to work, they used to be a Subaru specialist, and they said a wishbone is a Toyota only part, they can't get it anywhere else. And do you know how much they wanted for it? 500 pound plus VAT. 500 pound plus fat for a wishbone on a Toyota, which cost me four and a half grand, is definitely a no-go. And unfortunately, it seems like a similar sort of story for the whole car. The bonnet, can't find one. The crash bar, can't find one. The radiator, can't find one. The only place I can see which sells all of this stuff is Toyota itself, and it actually works out cheaper to buy another one of these, take the parts off it, and then sell what's left. Just take a look at this on eBay. There is only one Toyota GE86 being broken for parts. It's white, and all the parts I need are already gone. And look, there is no other GT86 being broken for parts. So it's looking like one of the cheapest cars on the channel is gonna turn out to be probably one of the most expensive cars by the end of this. And this is probably why this car got written off and not fixed by the insurance company because it would have been too expensive to repair. 500 pounds for a wishbone and that's just the start of it. I also have an engine light on and a traction control light on, which I have no idea why. There's also a pretty bad knock-in. I don't know whether it's the exhaust or some engine mount. Just listen. Oh, stalled it. Oh, it sounds awful. <laughs> Now, despite us getting off on kind of a bad start with the Toyota, I kind of feel I have some sort of attachment to it already. It's just got so much character, and I'm really looking forward to the build. And on the plus side, there's a lot of aftermarket upgrade parts you can get for the 86. So again, it's starting to look like one of those builds where we're replacing body parts for body kits. And believe me, I already know they do turbocharger kits for this. <laughs> what do you think I bought it for? So 
what do you guys think of the latest build? I know it's sort of out of the ordinary and not something that everyone's gonna like, but there's just something about this that I do really like. And from the short time I've been doing YouTube, I've realized I can't please everyone. And if I do try and please everyone, it ends up not being as enjoyable for me. And I think I make the best content when I'm enjoying myself. And the collection of cars that I've got right now, I enjoy every single one of them. And I know you guys are waiting for an update on the twin turbo Lamborghini, which hopefully we'll be getting very, very soon. But again, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am starting the GT86 build. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. And remember to go check out Evo Magazine. The link is in the description.